Hey guys, this is Jonathan Gardner. I know, I know, long time, no see. Well, I'm back. So let's start this video with why should I learn real physics? If you were like me when I first went to college, I always thought physics was that subject that was dry and boring. It was something really smart people who have nothing better to do study. Or maybe if you want to build some fancy new ray gun from the military, you'd get into physics. Uh, the rest of us mere mortals should stay far, far away from that. It's, it's too hard. It's boring. It's not practical. Well, I decided to give up on my dreams of becoming a computer scientist and chose physics instead. And I think it was one of the best decisions I ever made. So without wasting any more of your time, here's why you should learn physics. Number one, physics is fun. I understand. You think that I'm crazy for saying that math equations on chalkboards is fun. Well, here's the thing. That's not real physics. Real physics is studying the real world around you. Real physics is learning how that really works. Uh, some of you were exposed to physics by teachers who barely understood the subject themselves. It was a requirement to get out of the way so you can go on in your life and study whatever you really wanted to study. You didn't want to learn it. You didn't care much for it. And your teacher didn't help. Let me show you a clip. That, my friends, is a frog levitating in a 10 Tesla magnetic field. 10 Tesla doesn't sound like much, but it's huge. And that frog is floating there. This is a real life anti-gravity field that you're witnessing. That's real physics. Let's peel back the layer a bit and see what's really going on. Why is that frog floating? It's because frogs like you and me are mostly made of water and water is diamagnetic. That is, when you put water in a magnetic field, it creates a tiny magnetic field opposite to the magnetic field it's in. Meaning, if you put water in a strong enough magnetic field, it will be pushed away from it. When I first learned that repulsor rays was a real thing, it blew my mind. Let's go a little deeper. Why did they make that 10 Tesla magnet? And how did they do it? That's a question for engineers and the the crazy physicists who decided to actually try this out. I'm sure that uh, there's a lot of technical details about how they got uh, current strong enough to produce such a magnetic field. And if you want to read all about that, you can go study the paper and find out for yourself. Perhaps you can even build one in your own garage. I wouldn't recommend it though. 10 Tesla is ridiculously crazy. But that's what physics is about. Building things that actually work, that are just crazy enough to work. Here's the best part though. Think about this. Their first reaction when they produced that 10 Tesla field wasn't to put various devices to detect the strength of the field. No, someone grabbed a frog and put it in that field just to see if indeed it would float. And yes, it did. That's real physics. If you're like me, you can't get enough of channels like King of Random, Backyard Scientist, and on and on and on. There's so many on YouTube. Um, Colin Furs is another one that comes to mind. These people are doing real physics. They're creating real objects. They're understanding how the universe works. And that's what makes physics so fun. On to reason number two, why you should learn physics. You should learn physics because physics is hard. Okay, okay, calm down. Yeah, physics is hard. It's not easy. It is fun, of course, and I won't lie to you. If you really want to understand physics, you're going to have to learn math, a lot of math, a ridiculous amount of math, and you're going to have to learn about new ideas, strange ideas. It will take a long time to wrap your head around these things. When George Mallory was asked why he wanted to climb Mount Everest, he famously said, because it is there. Just like that, physics is there. Physics is the hardest mental challenge that this world has to offer that I know of. If there was a more difficult one, I'd probably be trying it out myself. When you finally understand a concept, though, it's like you've just scaled Mount Everest for yourself. There is a rush of endorphins you get when you've mastered a concept. The best thing of all is when you're out in the public and somebody talks about physics and you actually know what you're talking about, you'll feel pretty good. When you finally master these concepts, you'll belong to an elite group. Few individuals have ever done this, and it's a great feeling. The third reason why you should learn physics is physics is one of the so-called hard sciences. Hard because it is difficult, of course, but also hard because it is uncompromising. Physics is real. When you're wrong, the universe is more than happy to tell you. And believe me, as a student of physics, I know we've been wrong a lot and we'll be wrong again. That's fine. Think of it. We spend years studying these theories and these ideas. We come up with fantastic conclusions and we have textbooks explaining the latest and greatest, 
But when we discover finally that one of those things is wrong, we get to discover an entirely new universe with new ideas and new thoughts. It's like being a child all over again. Physics defers to reality. Reality tells us which way physics goes. The fourth reason you should learn physics, because physics is physical. Physics is one of the few sciences where we actively encourage you to get up, get out, and try something new. Grab your hammers, grab your saws, your wires, your batteries. We're doing physics. I don't know who you are or what you like to do, but I like to use my hands to build things and sometimes break them. We get to do that too in physics, by the way. So that's another reason to learn physics. It gets you outside. It gets you in your garage. It gets you in laboratories. It gets you trying out new things with new ways and trying new ideas. And here's the next reason why you should learn physics. Physics teaches you how to handle complexity. Um, I'm going to tell a joke. Hopefully it's funny. There was a farmer who was raising chickens. He went to the neighboring university to find out a better way to raise chickens. And uh, the departments challenged each other to see who could come up with the best solution. After a few months, they met together with the farmer and explained their various solutions. So the chemists, they studied the soil and they studied the chicken feed and they had some propositions for how to create better feed for the chickens and what chemicals to use. The biologists studied the various breeds of chickens out there and discovered a few that might be better suited for the climate. And of course you had the, uh, oh yeah, the mathematicians, they had built models and, you know, various ideas about, you know, do the more of this, you get more of that and various statistical relationships. The businessmen analyzed the market and said that the poultry products of this and that would be doing well. So you should invest in these kinds of those kinds of chickens. Finally, the physicist had his turn to speak. He started this way. He said, assume the chicken is a perfect sphere in a perfect vacuum. And that's the joke. Well, you're supposed to laugh. <laughs> anyway, one thing physics teaches you is how to deal with complexity and complex systems. What kinds of simplifications are valid and how far can you stretch them? What happens if you simplify too much or not enough? And when can you bend the rules of math to find solutions for an unsolvable equation? On and on. Physicists know how to handle complexity. In my day job as a software developer, I deal with complexity all the time. And it's one of the things I love about my job is it's very complex. And I love using the things I learned in physics to make my job easier. Here's another reason why you should learn physics. This is an obscure reason. You probably didn't know it. But physics teaches you how to estimate. There's a famous story of Enrico Fermi when the first atomic bomb was detonated he wanted to see how powerful it was and obviously they had set up an array of of uh, complicated devices to measure the power of the bomb however enrique Fermi wanted his answer quicker so he took a piece of paper and tore it up in little pieces and as the shock wave passed by him of course he was very far away from the blast at the time uh, he dropped the pieces of paper to see how far they moved and just based on that he was able to estimate that the bomb was 10 kilotons of course, the actual value was 20 kilotons, so he's off by a factor of two. But in estimation land, that's a pretty decent result, especially because he didn't use a calculator or any kind of complicated device. And in physics, you'll learn how to do that. And we do this quite often. It's how we solve problems more often than not. So in physics, one of the first things you'll learn is how to estimate. And we'll be doing it again and again throughout our learning. Now, granted, sometimes these estimates do sound silly. For instance, physicists are famous for using 1 or 10 for pi instead of 3.141. The reason why is you don't need all those digits and you can get a very decent answer with just you know 1 or 10 instead of anything else. So uh, yeah, we'll learn how to estimate in physics and it's a great skill to have. The final and my favorite reason why you should learn physics is physics brings math alive. Mathematics is ultimately a game played with the rules of logic. See what you can prove using logic, given the most basic set of assumptions, for instance. And math is a very interesting field. Applied math, on the other hand, is math that's actually useful. And chemists, of course, and physicists as well, we love their applied maths. One thing about physics, though, is we actually have physical phenomena that we can attach to these formulas that you see in mathematics. A parabola becomes the trajectory of a rocket or an arrow. Ellipses are the orbits of planets and moons. Waves are not just interesting features you see on the surface of water or in sound, but the building block of reality itself. And derivatives, those are forces and velocities. The cross product, what's it good for? Why, that's the magnetic force. And all kinds of behavior and rotational kinematics relies on the cross product. 
and on and on. We take math and we bring it alive. How often have physicists done an experiment, produced a graph, and then somebody said, hey, that almost looks like math? The answer is quite often, actually. So if you want to put math into some kind of practical category where everything has some kind of physical counterpart to it, you're going to have to learn physics. That's the best way to see math come alive. In conclusion, why learn physics? Learn physics because it's fun. Learn it because it's hard. Learn it because it's real. Learn it because it gets you physically active. Learn it because it teaches you complexity and estimation. And finally, learn it to bring math alive. I'm still new to this format that I'm using. I've recorded this in Audacity, and I put images on top of it using Final Cut Pro X. I don't know what I'm doing. There's probably going to be some videos appearing somewhere around here. Click on one of them if you like. I have some links in the description for things that I might be or might not be offering. And maybe I'll have some music by my daughter Eliana. I'll have a link to her channel in the description as well. Thank you, all of you who have been watching me and supporting me from the beginning. And I think it's done now. I'll just shut up. Bye.